the key to an excellent life. Genesis chapter 49, uh, we'll see a story there. Genesis 49, it was Jacob who called his children together and began to give prophecies concerning their future. And I want us to look at from verse 2. It said, Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the beginning of my strength and vigor, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power, that that should have been your birthright. Do you see that? That was his potential. That should have been your birthright. That's an amplified version. Verse 4 says, But unstable and reckless and boiling over like water, in parenthesis it says, in sinful lust, so you shall not excel. Excel is the word from which you get excellence, right? It says you will not excel or have preeminence of the firstborn because you went up to your father's bed with Bilhah, you defiled it, he went up to my couch. So you see, Jacob was speaking about his first son, a great guy who had the potential to be great, the blessing of Abraham that flew from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, will have come upon the life of Reuben. In fact, in his potential, uh, Jacob called him a few things. Number one, he said, you are my firstborn. Number two, he said, you are my might. Okay? Because you are the, his first seed. You carry, uh, if his strength was 100, you will carry about 95 be, before he began to give back to the other 11. He said, you are my might. Number three, he said, you are the beginning of my strength. He said, you are the beginning of my vigor. You are preeminent in dignity. So there was so much about the life of Reuben that we were about to see. He said, you are preeminent in power. But he said, you see, because you are unrestrained in discipline. You see, uh, King James Version says, are unstable as waters. Uh, but the, the Amplified Version says, you are boiling over in your lust. You see, we all have our lusts, but our ability to suppress our loss is what makes for excellence. Everybody has his or our own weaknesses, but when you see a man whose life is excellent, he's a man who's been able to tame his weaknesses, who's been able to manage himself. But for real Ben, Jacob said, you are as unstable as water, and he said, because of that, you will not exert. Even though you have the potential for excellence, it's not going to materialize in your life because you do not understand how to manage, how to suppress yourself, how to discipline yourself. So the fundamental key to excellence that I'm talking about here is the key of discipline. Somebody say discipline. Is the key of discipline. You cannot afford to live an unrestrained, indisciplined life. So, there was a fine girl that Jacob married called Bila. I don't know how Reuben fell in love with Bila. I mean, you could see a woman and appreciate a woman. He could even be your father's wife. But something should tell you in your mind that, no, this one is a no-go area. There is nothing wrong with appreciating a woman. You see a fine woman, you can even pass a compliment. But you must understand that this, there are boundaries. I can compliment, but I cannot do more than that. Do you understand that? But for you to look at your father's wife over and over and over, scope her, I don't know how he did it, but you will understand that Reuben sleeping with his father's wife was not an accident. It was a deliberate act of indiscipline. He could not discipline his body. So Jacob saw it and didn't talk. But when it was time to bring the prophecy about their future, Jacob said, because you were indisciplined in your conduct, unrestrained in your appetite, now, you see, what makes for a lack of excellence in people is inability to manage appetites. The appetite of sex, the appetite of sleep, the appetite of food, the appetite for pleasure, entertainment. Every man, every woman has those appetites. We all have them. So you see somebody who is supposed to wake up and then he sleeps. Uh, so Solomon says, a little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of the arms. He says, so shall thy poverty come. Everybody has appetites, but you must learn to manage them. You see people who eat with their ten fingers, you know, put 
both hands in the pocket, empty it, just because, oh, I saw this, unrestrained buying. You see, they have a budget, but as soon as they see the things black, you know, beckoning at them, they just drop the budget and buy above what they are earning. And then they say they are poor. How wouldn't you be poor? So what you see that Jacob was saying to Reuben here sounded like a curse, but it was actually a prophecy of his attitude. Even if Jacob didn't say anything, the fact that Reuben was an indisciplined man, there was no way he was going to exert. If you put Reuben in a place and then he had access to women, he was going to mess up with them. And you cannot be a good leader if you cannot bring your body under subjection. So you read about Paul, the great Paul, in 1 Corinthians, I think 9.27. He said, I put my body under subjection. I discipline myself. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others. So you can even teach people about discipline and being disciplined. He said, lest that by when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So every man, every woman must submit himself to discipline. And you and I will agree that discipline is not easy. Discipline is not easy. It's one of the reasons why people now see adulthood now scam. Yeah, he's, he's the reason. Because when you were young, uh, there, were, there, were, there wasn't a lot that you needed to do for yourself. But now you needed to catch a good sleep, catch a good rest, yet you need to work and make money and take care of children. In that your short 24 hours, you do a lot. It takes discipline to be effective. You try to still achieve balance in the midst of the ozu bozu of life. You see, it takes discipline to achieve all of that. But that's the key to excellence. You cannot pray excellence without discipline. I was saying to Ross last week that the Bible says that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. The king's meat was sweet. The king's meat was delicious. The king's meat was popular. Everybody was eating the king's meat. But Daniel said, I will not defile myself with the king's meat. So that's important. Discipline is key. What was it that made for the success of Joseph? Uh, despite the dream. So it's not only your dream. You can be a great dreamer, but if you lack discipline, the dreams will never come through. You can be so much gifted, but you see, talent is not enough. Talent, in fact, it has been discovered that many talented people actually lack discipline, and that's why they don't succeed as much as they would. So you'll find out that in many places, hard work beats talent. Oh, they will say this guy is talented, but we know. But there is another one that is not as talented, but is hardworking, his hard work will be talent. So it's not enough to have a good dream, have a good vision, have great talent. If the key, the fundamental key of discipline is lacking, he said, unstable as waters, unrestrained in your appetite, he said, you will not exist. It's not possible, it's not a curse. You know, he just needed to say it. You will not exert if you couldn't manage your appetite for your father's wife. It means that if you step out, only God knows what you are on the street. So discipline is very, very important. You know a lot of people in the scriptures, people like Samson, the great Samson who was not disciplined. Everywhere he went, he always saw a woman. And he didn't stop at seeing them, he went into them. And there was one that he went into and didn't come out alive. Yeah, as strong as he was. There was a night he entered into a city and entered into a woman and the mighty men of the city laid in wait for him. He was powerful. He came out, carried the gate of the city upon his shoulder and went up. But it's only a matter of time. A man that is not disciplined will fall. Yeah, he can escape with a lot, but eventually in discipline will catch up. In discipline will catch up. So it's important that you set your life on the paradigm of discipline. How am I disciplined with my prayer life? Am I disciplined with the study of the word of God? Am I disciplined with reading other materials? Am I disciplined in the way I use social media? Have you found yourself just getting lost on the social media and then you set your phone and say, tell me how much I spent, how much time I spent on social media. And then it says, every day you spend four hours. Eh? What? Then you have to be deliberate because those things chip away your life. It's in the aggregate of it that you find out that a major part of your life has been lost because you didn't discipline the little, little things. Somebody said if you sleep eight hours a day, by the time you are 75, you have slept away 25. How can you imagine that? 
So you wake up and you are doing your 75th birthday, but actually you are only 50. Only 50. 25 years sleeping, and you are still going to sleep for life. Right? i like us to pray this morning and say, Lord, help me to be disciplined. Help me to be disciplined with my life. Help me to be disciplined in my spiritual life, in my physical life, in my financial life. Every aspect of human life needs discipline. Lord, I receive grace to be disciplined. I receive grace to put my body under subjection. Lest that when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Help me, Lord, to live a disciplined life. Help me to live a life of restraint. Putting myself under subjection. Nobody is going to do it for you. You've got to do it for yourself. Say, so, Lord, help me to be disciplined. Help me to be disciplined in my entertainment, in my food, in my sleep. Whatever I do, I receive the grace to be disciplined. I receive wisdom for discipline. Wisdom for balance. In the name of Jesus, I receive wisdom for balance. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive grace this morning that we will have an excellent life in the name of Jesus.